Hi folks, I was listening to a podcast earlier this week and it was about the airline industry and how it was going to recover um, from the pandemic essentially. Um, and so I just wanted to talk to you about this. Now, it's really important that you go beyond the basics when you're discussing this in an essay. So if you want to hit those higher levels, you're going to have to go into uh, a little bit more detail. So what I've done in this video is I've broken up the airline industry into different parts. So for instance, you've got the commercial part, okay, which is holiday makers. You've got the business part, which is your business travellers, but you've also got um, cargo that travels through airlines as well. You've got the domestic market and the international market. And to get those higher mark, uh, to get those higher marks in your essays, you need to be aware of all of these subsections of the airline industry. You shouldn't be talking about the airline industry as a whole. So a great way to use the airline industry in essays is to evaluate with different. Um, to evaluate with different subsections. So for instance, you might be talking about how holiday makers are returning back to holidays, but then you can say that the same might not happen with business uh, travellers because they will use technology um, to hold meetings and, and conferences and stuff like that. So if you can kind of compare the subsections within the airline industry, you'll get higher evaluation marks and analysis marks. Let's crack on. So in terms of the basics, things that you should already know is that we know that the airline industry has suffered during the pandemic. So the estimated lost revenue for the air, for airlines worldwide is estimated at $370 billion. $128 billion of that is said to be through uh, cargo transport. And we don't know how this is going to develop. So for instance, when it comes to cargo transport and transporting goods, you know, will companies start shifting to if less um, flights are taking place, will companies start shifting to drones? And are we going to see a development in kind of in drones uh, and their ability to shift cargo? We don't know. Um, we also need to be mindful of this nervousness around travel. So there's a real debate uh, around whether travellers will just go straight back into going on holiday, etc. Or whether there's going to be a slight nervousness around travel. And we'll need to keep our eyes open for that. So during the academic year, you want to keep your eyes open for where the numbers are returning. If you see any headlines in the news about, you know, the volumes of people travelling through Heathrow, etc, etc. You want to find out if it's going back to pre-pandemic levels or not okay so that's something to look out for during the year because we don't have the answers yet the industry has suffered from massive job losses and not just job losses in terms of pilots and air stewards etc but also uh, from their supplier businesses so people working at Rolls-Royce and Boeing and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute so if we dig a little deeper, so we know the basics are, we've seen massive losses, we don't know if people are going to return and feel comfortable, um, and we've seen losses in both kind of commercial travel, business travel, and we've seen losses through cargo as well. Now, to dig a little bit deeper and get those higher marks, let's talk about the business versus the commercial travel. So, as we analyse this industry, you want to keep your eyes open for both. Commercial, uh, so holiday makers, are more is more likely to pick up quickly, okay? Um, because the business market, we've seen advancements. You know, there's been new updates with Teams and Microsoft doing a load of work there. Zoom has developed. Um, Facebook has its own um, kind of online kind of um, uh, video call um, software as well now. So we're seeing a lot of technological companies kind of really advancing in terms of video calls. So we don't know if businesses will return back to kind of traveling as much. We should see holiday makers return really. Um, we need to think about how airlines are going to win back their business travelers and why do they want to win them back? Well, they spend a lot more money, they travel, um, usually in business or first class or, you know, kind of economy plus. So they buy the more expensive seats. So what will they do? Are they going to reduce their prices? If they reduce their prices, are they welcoming then uh, commercial travellers and holiday makers to just upgrade? So we need to keep our eyes open for that and see if that happens um, and see how um, elastic those prices are and see how, the, how airlines win um, uh, those customers but also how they make sure that their capacity is fully utilised, okay? Also, business travellers 
book last minute. So what happens is airlines will hold a load of seats for them because they book very last minute. So really, if they want their capacity to be utilised and want to ensure that it's utilised, which they will want to because ca cash flow is a massive issue at the moment for airlines, um, they will release those earlier. But then if those business travellers do return, they'll find it harder to make bookings. So there's the prospect of possibly losing those customers. So that's something to keep your eyes open on. And that's a challenge the airline industry fa faces. So that's commercial versus business. The second kind of way to split it is domestic versus international. So in areas where countries have controlled the levels of COVID, like China, New Zealand, Australia, they are seeing domestic travel return back to pre-pandemic levels. So flights between maybe New Zealand and Australia, etc. Okay, and within China as well. How is this going to affect different airlines differently? And again, this is about getting those higher marks. So other smaller airlines internationally, will they bounce back quicker? Because they rely less on international travel and they do a lot of the smaller domestic flights. We don't know. And that's something to keep your mind, um, eyes open. Or will those larger airlines start flying more domestically again we just don't know and we need to keep our eyes open for that okay so domestic versus international is another area for us to focus on impact on suppliers there's been a freeze on purchases of new aircraft as you can imagine but this is going to have an impact on companies such as rolls royce who are massive in the uk and also boeing now the uk government has provided a support package to airlines and that includes rolls royce so it'll be interesting to see how they pull back. So that's one in terms of government intervention to keep your eyes open. How do they kind of claw that back and how do those companies cope um, without that government support? And can they get back on their feet quickly? Issues around planning, okay? So this is a big one, especially if you do business studies. It's important to realize that a lot of these airline businesses rely heavily on data. So they'll have a look at how many people traveled in previous years and then they will book that number of airlines, you know, they're not just all parked up in Heathrow. How are they going to make those decisions? Because all previous data is going to become irrelevant. We've not been in this situation before. So there's going to be that battle between scientific decision making using data and kind of going with your gut. OK, to some extent, they'll have to make the decisions without the data, which is quite scary for a company that relies so heavily on it. And there's really three things that can happen. They either get it right or you're going to have two very poor outcomes. One of them is you either fail to get enough aircraft ready and therefore uh, you're, you um, basically can't take on bookings. You have a loss of earnings and a loss of, loss of customers. Or you overcommit and then you have a lack of efficiency and massive cash flow problems, which then sends you bankrupt. Okay, So they're your dangers on either sides of the extreme. Remember, it's, it is difficult to access planes and also cash flow is a huge challenge right now for airlines because they've not had that money coming in regularly. Finally, and again, uh, and this is more for the economists, is that labour supply challenge and also for business study students when it comes to HR challenges. Okay, Lots of airlines have not taken on new pilots over the last year, unsurprisingly, because they're not flying. They have to, now what you need to know is pilots have to fulfill a certain number of hours in the air flying in order to remain qualified. So either that threshold is going to have to change or we may have seen a lot of pilots that have been furloughed or not flown. We'll see a lot of them switching careers quite possibly. And then when we do get back to pre pandemic levels, there is a chance that we will see um, a shortage of pilots in 2023, for instance, okay? So that's something that we need to keep our eyes open for. When things do go back to normal, what percentage of air passenger crew, sorry, yeah, so like air um, stewards, etc., pilots, what percentage of them come back to the industry? We've seen it happen in the hospitality market where we've seen lots of individuals not come back to restaurants and pubs and they're dealing with huge supply shortages of labour, are we going to see the same in the airline industry? We don't know yet. So that's another thing to keep be mindful of. So things to look out for that I've highlighted so far are business versus commercial travel. What's going to happen to the balance? Are we going to see less business travellers and are we going to see prices go down for like first, sec uh, first class, business class travel for, um, you know, holiday makers? Um, 
domestic versus international travel, what's going to happen, which smaller companies are going to bounce back quicker because they do more domestic flights than larger companies. Again, we don't know. Uh, impact on suppliers, how are Rolls Royce going to bounce back and also the airline industries once that government support is taken away? How are businesses going to plan? What's going to happen? Probably towards the, you know, maybe even December and we can have a look at, um, you know, kind of Easter travel numbers before you go into your exams. What's going to happen to those travel numbers? Um, and how are businesses going to plan for that? And are they going to successfully plan or are we going to see a shortage? Is there going to be a surge of people that want to go abroad at Easter? And are we going to see a shortage of seats available? And so prices rise potentially. Um, and what's going to happen to the labour supply for the airline industry? Finally, the final thing to look out for is what's going to happen with customer service, because we should see a lot of things become automated. And we'll, how are airlines going to manage the customer experience if they have a shortage in um, employees? But also, are they going to reevaluate the whole check-in process? So I hope that gives you lots to think about. But the important thing is you can't just um, make blanket statements about the airline industry. If you want to get those higher marks, you need to think about the airline industry um, with all of its kind of subdivisions, whether that be holiday makers, business travel, cargo, domestic versus international. You need to look at all of those elements in order to construct a really good argument.